What do you mean by a power MOSFET? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome back to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask the obvious question, what do you actually mean by a power MOSFET? Well, let's find out. So we know what a normal MOSFET stands for. A MOSFET is the abbreviation given for a metal oxide semiconductor field effective transistor. I'll write it down. MOSFET which means M for metal, O for oxide, S for semiconductor, F for field, E for effect and T for transistor. So from this, from the expansion of the word MOSFET, we should understand the fact that a MOSFET is also a type of transistor. It is also a type of transistor. So in the previous video, we saw what a BJT or a bipolar junction transistor was. We saw how the structure of a power BJT and we also recollected the structure of a normal BJT or a normal bipolar junction transistor. So similarly, a MOSFET is also a type of a transistor, but here it is a field effect transistor and going deeper, it is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. That is what MOSFET stands for. So now you might be wondering then what is the difference between a power BJT and a power MOSFET? Well, the difference is that a power BJT is a current control device whereas a power MOSFET is a voltage controlled device. That is the main difference between those two. So in the case of a BJT or a bipolar junction transistor, it had an emitter, base and a collector. Those were the three terminals in the case of a BJT. But in the case of a power MOSFET, the three terminals present here are the source, the gate and the drain. So let us construct the structure of a power MOSFET. Okay, so before that we need to know the structure of a normal MOSFET. So just like we discussed, a normal MOSFET is also a type of a transistor. So a transistor, it first has an N-type semiconductor material like this. And after that it has a P-type semiconductor material. And then it has an N-type semiconductor material. So in the case of a MOSFET, here we'll have the source, here we'll have the gate, and here we'll have the drain. So this is the structure of a normal MOSFET. But now a power MOSFET is simply but a normal MOSFET in which certain changes are brought forth to its structure so that it has got improved power handling capabilities. So here, in the case of a power MOSFET, it has got improved power handling capabilities, it has got improved voltage handling capabilities, and also it has a very high switching frequency. So for us to achieve all those, certain changes must be brought forth in the structure of this particular MOSFET. So for that, what we do is, let us expand this and let us draw it over here, like this. So I've expanded this over here. So this is the source which is connected to an N-type semiconductor material and this is the gate which is connected to a P-type semiconductor material and this is the drain which is again connected to an N-type semiconductor material. So the first change that we must bring forth in this is the doping. So for that we have to change the structure like this. It becomes like this. So here the drain must also be connected to an N plus type of semiconductor material. So therefore this thus leaves a particular space over here and there we will have an N minus kind of semiconductor material and this acts as the drift space of this particular power MOSFET. So this is the drift space and therefore it is this drift space or this drift region that is responsible for the high voltage handling capabilities or the very high switching frequency of this particular power MOSFET. So here the position of the gate is moved from here to here like this. So this is how the gate terminals are connected. So here if you observe very carefully, if you observe this diagram very carefully, you can understand the fact that I have drawn this a bit more bigger that is that is in between the connection of the gate lead and the semiconductor there's a region here this is the SiO2 layer and it is this SiO2 layer which provides capacitive properties for this particular MOSFET so this thus is the basic structure of what you call a power MOSFET as simple as that as simple as this so here there are two types of MOSFETs an N-channel MOSFET and a P-channel MOSFET. So depending on if you are having an N-channel MOSFET and a P-channel MOSFET, there are two types of symbols that can be present. 
So I'll draw the two types of symbols. So this is the diagram of an n-channel power MOSFET. So the symbol of an n-channel power MOSFET is given like this. This is the gate, this is the drain and this is the source. And because this is an n-channel, the source will have an arrow like this. But rather if we need to draw the symbol of a p-channel power MOSFET, we would get something like this. It's the same symbol, but the only difference is that the arrow goes outward like this. So that is the difference between the two symbols of an N-channel and a P-channel power MOSFET. So now let us plot the characteristics of this particular MOSFET. First, let us plot the transfer characteristics. So the transfer characteristic is plotted between the input voltage and the output current. So here the output current is a drain current given as ID and the input voltage is given as VGS as there's a voltage across the gate and the source. So therefore as the voltage between the gate and the source is increased at first the current doesn't increase and it stays over here but after a certain value we see an increase in the curve like this. So this is the transfer characteristics in the case of a power MOSFET. But here VDS is kept as a constant. That is the voltage across the drain and the source is kept as a constant. So therefore this thus is the transfer characteristics of a power MOSFET. Next let us plot the output characteristics of this particular power MOSFET. So this is plotted between the output current and the output voltage. So therefore plotting it like this. The output current just like this on the previous case is ID or the drain current but the output voltage is VDS. So here as VDS increases first a small increase is seen like this and then a constant value is obtained like this but when we further increase it a breakdown happens and a large outburst of current is seen like this. So here it happens at a constant value of VGS or the voltage between the gate and the source. Okay. So this is the curve that we observe for one certain value of VGS. So let us assume that this particular VGS is increased. So let us assume this VGS is equal to say some 0.5 volt. So let us assume that we are plotting a curve for VGS is equal to 1 volt. In that case the same thing happens like this. It first increases, then adds a constant value and then outbreak or a sudden breakdown happens and it has an outburst of current flow. This might be for VGS is equal to 1 volt and therefore for various values of VGS it happens like this. We can see multiple curves like this. So this thus is the output characteristics of a particular power MOSFET. So therefore this thus sums up what you refer to as a power MOSFET and the characteristics of a particular power MOSFET. So in this video we understood what a power MOSFET is and we also constructed the structure of a power MOSFET and we also saw the symbol to represent a power MOSFET along with the transfer characteristics and the output characteristics of a power MOSFET. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you mean by a power MOSFET and we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.